Stations of the Cross with St. Eugene de Mazenod. The Eleventh Station Jesus is Nailed to the Cross. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Here they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The pain of Christ's passion reaches its climax and his suffering is at its most intense. It is the prelude to his death. We are surrounded by many people, nailed, as it were, by the pain and suffering of sickness, injustice and starvation. It is the reality that Jesus shares as he remains nailed to the cross. Am I present to the suffering around me? Am I God's ambassador of love, joy and peace, building a better world where and how I can? Or do I add to the barrage of abuse towards those less fortunate than myself? A thought from Oblate Tradition We will always be close to the people with whom we work. Awareness of our own shortcomings humbles us, yet God's power makes us confident as we strive to bring all people, especially the poor, to full consciousness of their dignity as human beings and as sons and daughters of God. We pray. Lord, may my heart be open to the suffering in our world today. May I respond to people's pain with words and ways that are gentle. May I never speak words that debase others, nor seek to ruin their reputation through gossip, rumour and half-truths. Encourage me to spread good news to my family and friends. The Twelfth Station Jesus Dies on the Cross From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw what took place, they were terrified, and said, Truly, this man was God's son.
Where can I find help to believe in God's presence, even in circumstances where my faith is challenged by doubt and disbelief? Where can I find help but at the foot of the cross? A thought from Oblate Tradition It was during the Adoration of the Cross on Good Friday, probably in 1807, that Eugene experienced a grace of conversion, a special experience of the love of Christ. From that moment, Eugene knew that Jesus had shed his blood for not just other people, but also for Eugene's own personal sins. He was filled with a sense of profound confidence, gratitude and joy in the mercy of God. After experiencing the gaze of love from Jesus on the cross, Eugene sincerely believed we must spare no effort to extend the Saviour's work. We pray. Jesus, I cannot understand or accept the countless violent deaths, the cruelty and the injustices that happen across the world. Guard me from confusion, doubt and fear and give me an increase of faith in you. Help me to be a peacemaker in my home or workplace. The 13th station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed the body. In the aftermath of Jesus' death, life had to somehow go on. The dead had to be mourned and buried. There are no words to express how it feels when someone you love dies. So it was for the mother of Jesus and those of his followers who stayed to help remove his body. But they were not afraid to show they cared or were associated with Jesus. Sometimes it is difficult to pour myself out to help those who are marginalised or to stand with those who suffer because of intolerance, discrimination or rejection. Do I mourn for those who suffer in our world today? Is there anything that has died in me that I have not yet grieved over. A thought from Oblate Tradition At evening prayer each day, the Oblate family gathers before the Eucharist in communion and remembers all its members, living and dead. We pray. I, sometimes, face challenges that leave me at a loss. I worry that it's beyond my power to make a difference in my community or in the world. But Lord, I can hold on to you and I know you will give me the strength to carry on and to do what I can. The 14th station, Jesus is placed in the tomb. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified And in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. I remember Jesus said, Even the foxes have holes, but I have nowhere to lay my head. Jesus didn't even have a grave. But someone had prepared a grave for himself, and now he gave it to Jesus. Once again, the way of the cross shows me an act of generosity. How do I show generosity to those in my community who have nowhere to lay their heads? Am I generous to the living? A thought from Oblate Tradition When faced with the demands of our mission and the needs to be met, we may feel weak and helpless. It is then that we can learn from the poor, especially making our own their patience, hope 
and solidarity. We pray. Lord, I know that you have promised to be there for me, always, no matter what happens. It can be hard to believe that promise when I feel utterly abandoned and alone. But I can only put my trust in you.